In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, today as we begin our final journey in Advent towards the coming of our Lord Jesus at Christmas, the readings of our Mass put before us the need to be united with the Holy Spirit. For if we are to prepare a place in our hearts for our Lord Jesus Christ, if we are to make space for him in our lives, and if we are to show him the same love and honour that the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is the model of all virtue, showed him at the time of his nativity and indeed throughout his life, we, like her, must be one with the Holy Spirit. It has been said of the Blessed Virgin Mary that such was the union between her heart, her will, and the Holy Spirit that the two of them became, as it were, one principle of operation. So there was no division in the unravelling of the events of Mary's life between her will and that of the Holy Spirit. He was perfectly and fully united to her from the beginning of her existence on earth all the way up to her holy death. We too must strive then for this union with the Holy Spirit and he will work wonderful things in us. In our reading from Isaiah today, we hear reference made to the various activities of the Spirit when he is in our hearts. If we stay close to the Blessed Virgin Mary, then indeed he will be able to do all of these things in us to the greatest glory of God <coughs> and the upbuilding of the Church. One of the activities of the Holy Spirit <clears throat> is quite simply the exercise of love in desire. A beautiful reference to holy desires are made by St. Augustine in the Office of Readings in the Ordinary Breviary. He says, There is another and interior way of praying without ceasing, and that is the way of desire. Your unceasing desire is your unceasing voice. You will lapse into silence if you lose your longing. Who did lapse into silence? Those of whom it was said, because wickedness is multiplied, the charity of many will grow cold. The coldness of charity is the heart's silence. Indeed, it is very sad when a Christian heart lacks a longing for God. If we find in ourselves little desire, then perhaps we have reason to turn to Our Lady without delay and say, increase in me holy love. If we find ourselves desiring, but struggling to put our desires into effect and struggling to remain firm in our desire, then this means that we're being tested. This is not necessarily a bad thing, but let us not go far from the Blessed Virgin, so that united with her, the whole strength of God's love might be in us and prepare perfectly a place in our hearts for our Lord Jesus, who is shortly to come among us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.